so in this section we are going to discuss about a specific topic uh, we call that as ssh so because you know there are two types of ways you can telnet the device generally you know telnet is a protocol inbuilt protocol on tcp ip which works on port number 23 so by sitting on any one of the computer in the lan or in the van i can access a remote device so i just need to go to this device i can simply say telnet and then ip address of that particular device let's say 192.168.1.100 let's say the ip address of this device is that and then this particular router has been already pre-configured with some specific password and then the login command has been created so now once this configurations are perfect and you have a connectivity between these two devices and you also know the ip address you can establish a remote connection to your device maybe maybe from the lan or from the van from any specific uh, network even if you have a specific router in a different location still you can access the device from here but now there is a major drawback with the telnet is the connection established is not secure like here you can see whenever we configure the telnet connection sends the text in an encrypted and it can be readable okay so to overcome this instead of using a telnet which works on port number 23 we are going to use something called ssh SSH works on port number 22, which is similar to Telnet. There's no big difference. SSH also allows you to access a remote device. But the difference between SSH and Telnet is the data is in an encrypted format, which means the connection established will be encrypted connection, which means it is more secure when compared with Telnet. So it's always recommended whenever I, I discuss some concepts on security uh, secure connections remote access so we generally say ssh is the most common method to provide a secure connection so because the connection established will be a encrypted connection so which means it provides more security than telnet but again on cisco routers by default telnet uh, ssh is not enabled we need to add some specific commands in order to ensure that we access our router remotely using ssh so in this section, we are going to mainly focus on that particular part. How to use Telnet, you already know from your basic CCNA uh, studies. So in this section, we are going to see how to configure SSH protocol on a Cisco router. And then we'll practically verify using the SSH, okay? So now, in order to configure SSH, I got a series of commands. Anyway, I'll come to these commands. I'm going to configure, we need to con So to configure SSH, I'm, I got a series of commands here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a router here, which is pre-configured with this IP address, or maybe I'll configure it here. And then we, I'm going to use one PC here, which is having the same, net, which is on the same network. So I want to ensure that I, from this PC, I should be able to access my router via through SSH. So now to make that possible, we need to configure some specific commands on the router so that SSH must be supported. So the first thing initially, these are the commands. So first we are going to configure the IP address and we ensure that the connectivity is established between them. Okay, so I got a pre-configured topology in the GNS where I connected my physical computer to a router here. Okay, so what we are going to do is the IP addressing on this particular device has been pre-configured with 192.168.1.1 and on the router side, I did not do any configuration. So I'm going to do the configuration from the scratch here so that you can understand here these are the configs so you can follow this document here even i got the diagram over there so based on this diagram we can understand what exactly we need to do here okay i got a connection here this is my router console screen from where i am going to access i'm going to configure the things okay so i'll start with the basic configurations if i verify swipe interface brief there is nothing configured so the first thing I'll do is I'm going to assign the IP address on my device. So any IP address as per our scenario, it should be 255.255.255.0 with a slash 24 submit mask. And then no shutdown command to make the interface up. And then the next thing, as I already said that the IP address, the device is pre-configured with IP address. So I should be able to ping between these two devices so I'll try to ensure that I should be able to ping between the router and the PC. 
so there is a connectivity here so now what's next to do now the next configurations are like here you can see the commands the next we are going to configure the host name and the domain name now whenever you are using ssh the domain name is mandatory and also we need to ensure that we configure the host name any name you can use because this both host name and the domain name are required for encryption keys which is going to be generated by the ssh so this is something mandatory so you can just use any name and domain name also you can use any name so i'm just using networkonlineacademy.com as my domain name so let us do that configuration so i'm going to my device the first thing i'll change the host name as r-1 and then i'm going to configure my domain name as uh, any name you can just type dot com okay fine so once you do this your device host name and the domain name has been registered here so based on that now we need to enable the keys so we need to generate the keys so that uh, we can have a secure connection so when once you generate the keys here it is going to enable the ssh automatically here so let us try to type the same commands here the command starts with crypto because by default this uh, keys will not be enabled on the cisco router so we need to generate the keys here generate rsa and then general keys and you can always use question mark uh, modules and how many modules so i'm just using 1024 here so once you do this you can see some messages here the key will be generated with the host name uh, with the domain name whatever you registered and the key module size is 1024 so it is going to generate and automatically it is going to enable your ssh as well so now if you want to verify your ssh you can always use show ip ssh command so which is going to show you ssh has been enabled with a version 1.9 so it's a version 1 so by default once you enable it is going to run the version 1 if you want you can even change to version 2 also okay so if you want to change to version 2 then we can just use this command to enable version 2 so if i verify show ip ssh once again you can see now my router has been enabled to support version 2 also so once we do this the next thing we are we need to do is uh, if you want you can even configure something called ssh timeout ideal timeout uh, and something around 60 seconds i'm going to configure here so ip ssh timeout i'm going to say in the form of seconds so 60 seconds of inactivity and then even you can define the authentication entries maximum how many entries the user should go so i'm going to give as three entries now once you do this configuration the next thing is we need to get into the telnet line that is vdv line and in that line we need to define the username and the password so for this so what i'm going to do is i'm going into the vtv line because by default the vtv line which is going to allow your telnet sessions as well as ssh sessions by default when you enable a password on the vtv line it is going to enable only telnet by default telnet traffic is allowed from the vtv line so we need to ensure that we also configure uh, ssh we enable ssh on that particular interface okay so here you can see in this vtv line command here so the first thing i'm going to define as login local login local means authentication is done based on the local username and the password which i'm going to create in the next step here and the major important part here is we need to ensure that we enable ssh under the vtv line so when you say transport input ssh command so when we give this command nothing but we are allowing through vtv line we are going to allow ssh if you if you just give transport input ssh, SSH it is going to allow only ssh line but if i define telnet also which means from the same line we can telnet as well as we can use ssh so both are possible so not mandatory to define both but it's a good practice to enable telnet as well as ssh depending upon your requirement you can either use telnet or ssh okay so these are the commands we need to configure let us do the configuration on our router here so my router is supporting 871 lines so i'll directly configure on all the lines the first thing i'm going to say login local once you define login local the authentication will be done based on the local database username and the password 
and then I'm going to say transport input and I need to define which SSH is the one option I want to use. If you want, you can even add telnet also. So I'm going to add both options so that SSH as well as telnet both should work from the same line. Done. Once I configure these things, the final thing we need to do is we need to create a username and the password for authentication. So I'm going to use create a username and then I'm going to enable secret password also so that because you know when you're accessing the devices there should be a VTY password. This is the VTY username and the password used and if you want to get into your privilege mode then we need to add enable command. So enable password also must be set. Done. So once we finish this configurations, we are ready to verify uh, SSH. So now to verify SSH, we need to go to our physical computer here. And from there, I want to telnet, I want to access the remote device through SSH. So if you want to use telnet, the simple method is we need to just go to the command prompt and then we can simply type telnet space IP address. It is going to provide you the user, it ask you the username and the password. So here I'm in the command prompt of my PC here cmd command prompt so what i'm going to do is i'm going to telnet my router from my pc here okay so anyway as we also enable line vty transport input ssh as well as telnet so first we'll verify with telnet here so when you're uh, using telnet from your pc ensure that your telnet uh, protocol has been enabled in your pc as well so when i give this it is asking me the local username and the password which i created and the password is cisco123 you can see it is I'm able to log in and the enable password I use uh, Cisco password so you can see I'm inside my router so I'm going to exit back so once I exit back uh, the next thing we need to verify the same thing via SSH so now SSH is something which is not supported by default so if you want to use SSH we need to use uh, any other specific application third-party application here so here also we are going to do the same thing so now here I got a application called Putty. Uh, you can either use this Putty application or uh, you can even use Secure CRT like that. There are many applications you can use. So here we need to type the IP address of the host, which is my router one, and the IP address of that device is 192.168.1.100, and SSH is configured based on port number 22. So I'm going to define that, and then I'll I need to click on Open. So once you click this. So it is going to ask you the login name, which I'm going to use the same username which I created on the local database. And then I'm going to configure the password as Cisco123. I can see I'm inside my router. And then the password and verifications. And if I verify show users, you can see I'm going to access from VTV line zero. And this is the specific user which is using, okay. So now you can see the same uh, documentation you'll find in my manual here where I also use the similar screenshots here where I type 192.168.1.100 uh, on the port number 22 and this is the what we did just now okay so this is how we need to enable SSH so you have to make sure that all these commands are configured properly in order to in order for the SSH to work